Post office called. We're going to go get some more turkeys. So I'm usually up later than this. Danielle's usually the one that's up and ready. But that's all right. Let's go. Today, we are welcoming some new friends to the homestead. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little traditional turkeys. They are a mixture of both male and female, so we did not choose one. And we're getting these now so we can get them ready for the fall. We have Thanksgiving coming up, and we also are big turkey lovers here. So we wanted to grab some and oh my gosh, these guys are so cute. They're only a few days old and we're going to talk a little bit about how you can prepare and get your turkeys set up for success, especially when they are baby chicks. Let's talk a little bit about how these guys get mailed. So first off, you are usually going to order them from any type of hatchery. We actually buy all of our animals from Hoover's Hatchery, which is part of Tractor Supply. All of Tractor Supply's animals go through Hoover's Hatchery and we've had a lot of great success from these birds. Almost all of the animals at our homestead are from Hoover's Hatchery and we've just never really had too many issues with them. So we continue to buy from them. They ship very quickly and they're usually gonna come in a box like this with some holes and then what will happen is they'll get delivered to your post office you'll actually have to go and pick these guys up but it's so worth it and I definitely suggest once you get the call kind of plan for that it's usually two three days um, and then you'll need to go pick these guys up super tiny they come at just a couple days old and they usually don't have any of their feathers grown in yet so they're gonna need to have you really help out to be their parents when you add them to your homestead which means you need to help make a home help give them food help give them water and really be what the mama turkey would be like for them so let's go head over to our barn where we're gonna go set up their brooder and talk a little bit about how you can start to set up your turkeys for success. The first step when you get your turkeys is you want to provide a home for them. They've been traveling in this cardboard box and they're gonna to start to need some food, water, as well as heat to help keep them alive, especially because they aren't gonna to have too many feathers. Now it is summer, it's really warm outside, so luckily we do have the heat on our side, but we're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure to put them in some type of home a nursery or what we call a brooder so what we use at our homestead is actually a very large 113 quart plastic container you can also use different items that are pretty similar to this but you want to be able to have something that you can keep them contained and safe and something that's going to hold in the heat with your heat light so we actually have a whole video on how we set up these brooders so I won't get too much into it but definitely creating a space for them now we have 10 baby turkeys so something like this is really good because it's nice and small and what's nice about it is they're not going to be able to stray too far from the light or too far from food and water. Turkeys are notorious for getting a little lost, so if you give them too large of a space, they might leave the light, the heat from that, or not be able to find food or water, and they can pass away if they do not stay where their food and water and heat are. Once you've gone ahead and got your container ready, you're going to apply a bedding. We use pine shavings at our farm, but you can also use straw, pieces of cut up cardboard, or any other like material. And so we're gonna lay around three to four inches. Then we'll take our little chickies and pop them into the brooder. Now you're gonna notice that when you get your chicks, sometimes they will have different colored droppings. That's definitely not something to worry about. It's just because they were in eggs they hatched out of them and this is kind of the fluids that were left in there so don't be alarmed if you have green droppings or strange colored droppings this doesn't mean your turkeys are sick or anything like that um, but you will just notice this and it will stop as they get older now that you've added your turkeys to the brooder you will need to provide some additional heat and protection for them 
We use a heat light that we use for our chickens as well, and we use it for all of our animals that we do add to a brooder. You're gonna wanna start at 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and then depending on the weather that you have around you, it's summer and very hot right now. We probably won't need to provide too much additional heat, but we do use an ink bird, which is, the, this little plug-in thing that can help regulate the temperatures. So I definitely suggest looking into it. We use it for all of our birds that we raise and it is amazing. It will basically turn on and off the heat and then you can lower it five degrees every week, which is what you wanna do is lower that temperature five degrees every week and then it helps you do that so you don't have to be changing the length of the lighting or working with that kind of stuff. Now, when your turkeys are in there, some signs that you might wanna keep an eye on, especially at the beginning, is are all the turkeys huddled up in an area? They seem really cold underneath the light. If they are, then it might mean that it's too cold in there and you need to add some additional heat. But if there is the heat lamp and they're scattered away as far away as they can from it, then maybe it's too hot and you should probably lower it. So definitely keep a close eye on your turkeys, especially that first few hours that you have them, you set them up in their brooder to make sure that they're ready, set, to go. The final step is making sure that you are truly the turkey's mom and environment. Because these turkeys are not free ranging, they're not able to grab their own goodies or water along the way, so you need to provide that for them. So you will want to provide free water for them, so unlimited clean water. We have one of these waterings that we actually use for all of our baby animals. This provides a little area that they can grab water and it's easy to clean out. All I have to do is fill this side and then lock it in. I do need to fill this with some clean water really quick. And then also in regards to food, you do want to provide a high protein food for these turkeys. You can choose to use a game bird chick feed, which is usually gonna be around 28% protein. But if you are raising chickens as well and you have chick food, you can also use that as well. Chick food is gonna be pretty high in protein. We actually use Nature Serve. It's really great chicken feed. It also has some essential oils in it, which really helps with when chicks are getting added to new environments, like today when we're adding them to this new brooder, and it helps calm them down, as well as just give them some additional nutrients that they might need. Now, I definitely suggest when you are giving any of your chicks, whether it be a turkey, quail, anything, you start off with a crumble. And most chick foods are going to be a crumble option, but you can see it's nice, small, and crumbly. And this is best because they have such small mouths, they're really not gonna be able to use a bigger type of food. So I definitely suggest starting off with a crumble, and we'll add this free and unlimited as well. So we don't time it, um, we just kind of fill it up throughout the day. Uh, every morning come in, make sure that their feed is filled up. So let's go add some clean water and food and I'll give you one last tip for raising turkeys. My last tip here is to enjoy this stage. Chicks of all types are so adorable, cute, and lovable during this time. So really enjoy this stage and take notice as they start to change and evolve. And get excited because adding turkeys is such an exciting step and I hope that you have the best of luck. If you're looking for some more tips on how to set up brooders or take care of baby chicks, then definitely check out some of these videos and we'll see you guys again next time. Bye.